Call to order the, meet, the meeting of the five, May 2nd, 2018 Federal <coughs> County Planning Commission. If you would please join me in a moment of silence. <clears throat> Thank you. We have the agenda before us tonight. If there's no change to the agenda, I'll ask for a motion to approve. Move for adoption. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, we have our committee reports tonight. I'll start with Mr. Moan, who's the CPPC. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the Comp Plan Committee met in April. Uh, we had one item on our agenda, and that was the St. Paul's on the Hill Comprehensive Plan Amendment application which is on this evening's agenda for discussion. Uh, the proposal uh, is to amend the Cincinnati Eastern Frederick Urban Area Plan of the 2035 Comprehensive Plan. And uh, more specifically, it's to change the land use designation from uh, the current institutional to urban center. Um, after discussion and some interaction with the applicant, the committee voted unanimously to recommend approval of the application. Thank you, sir. Our next committee report be on Transportation Committee, uh, Mr. Oates. Uh, yes, sir. We met uh, on April 23rd and had four items for discussion. The first was a request for truck restrictions on Jones Road uh, due to the limited number of trucks that were involved and how far the detours around Jones Wood would be, Road would be. Uh, the committee recommended that the uh, truck restriction not be considered at this time. Uh, there is a request for Grace Church Road, Route 668, that's uh, unpaved to be uh, reviewed and added to our uh, paved roads list. Uh, the committee voted to include that and for it to be ranked uh, the same way all the other roads are, so it'll be fair when it goes into the system. Uh, there's also a request for Woodside Road between Route 11 and Titan Concrete. Uh, again, the uh, committee uh, there are some proffers that were put forth of Titan Concrete's uh, rezoning, so the staff is going to look into that. Uh, there was a request for truck restriction down at Star Tannery on the road there. Again, the committee felt that the uh, uh, benefit of doing that was not that great and it would uh, have a lot of unintended consequences on the surrounding roads. And then finally, we just had an update on a couple of the county projects. Thanks, sir. Appreciate it. Our last committee report uh, is Frederick Water. Mr. Unger. Yes, sir. We met on April 17th. Um, the Frederick Water Board adopted 2019 through 2028 capital improvement plan. And it's a 10-year CIP plan. They got 87 projects allocated for that, which run them a little over $80 million for a 10-year plan. The Peckin uh, Water Treatment Plant is a big part of that, it's about 85% of it. And uh, for the other thing they talked about, they adopted, let me wait a minute, no, let me get ahead of myself. Direct staff scheduled a public hearing from May the 15th to accept public comments for the proposed base rate increase for the water and sewer. Uh, basically what's gonna happen, they're proposing a 4% increase for most of the for the mostly residents, which is going to be about five dollar increase by monthly every two months, so that shouldn't be hard to handle, hopefully. And uh, the the increase is going to be for generating uh, the wastewater treatment costs associated with uh, Frederick County Winchester Service Authorities down to Route Seven plant, and also its increase fees will also fund the ongoing lawsuit with the town of Stephen City and cover the town's unpaid monthly water and sewer bills. Uh, we have about 15,600 connections now with water. Uh, monthly water usage is still run about 5.8 million gallon of water per day. Stephen City Quarry is still holding its own. It's running uh, 651 feet. It actually did raise about a foot and a half in April with the rain we got. Uh, Clearbrook has run about 586 feet in, uh, at elevation, and it's staying very stable. Rainfall for the month was 1.57 inches, a little below normal. Uh, the quarries are holding their own, and they're hoping this coming May that 
it's going to generate a lot more water into the quarries to stabilize everything. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, next uh, reports from Winchester Planning Commission, our liaison, uh, Ms. Eaton. Yes, thank you. So since the uh, Frederick County Planning Commission last met, we had two meetings, a public session on April 17th and a work session just yesterday. Um, in the new business for April 17th, <clears throat> the single item on our agenda was a uh, request to for a fence that was deviating in opacity and height requirements. Um, that was forwarded on with a recommendation for approval to the city council. Um, yesterday's session, we had a request to amend um, the zoning ordinance in the limited in industrial district, M1, um, to, to create a, um, a conditional use allowance for private community centers. And those uses range from uh, a facility for non-commercial, non-residential use by organizations, institutions, and individuals providing social, cultural, recreational, and human resource programs and activities. We'll have a public session on that um, in the next two weeks. Um, and then April 17th, we had a few site plans that we reviewed. Um, one, as most of you have heard, was for the Museum of Shenandoah Valley for their new entrance parking lot, uh, event lawn, and their fitness trail systems. Uh, the other was Valley Health Center, the cancer center, for an expansion of their parking lot to um, include approximately 55 additional parking spaces uh, for their cancer center area. And the uh, Shenandoah University building um, that's just adjacent to the Valley Health um, Cancer Center uh, is looking to add an additional building on their footprint. Um, lastly, as many of you probably are also read in the paper this morning, um, yesterday we looked at a site plan um, just to kind of give it a quick review. There were some changes for the Brooks Manor, um, small revisions that's over on South Work and Kent. Um, what the developer did was they removed one of the proposed 27 units so that the subdivision's access road around, along the South Work section um, will accommodate a two-way traffic flow instead of just exiting out, which also slightly increases the green space um, within the subdivision's footprint. And that's all I have. You've been busy. <laughs> Thank you. That's a lot. Our last report of the evening is for our Board of Supervisor Liaison, Supervisor Trout. Good evening. Uh, so the Board of Supervisors re uh, met on April 25th, Wednesday. Uh, we approved conditional use permit for Alicia Feltner. Uh, we also, which was a 02-18. We also approved a con an outdoor festival permit for um, Miso Creso Nomadico. I guess that's how you say it. Uh, we postponed the public hearing uh, for Carmoose, which is 05-17 uh, for an additional month. And so four weeks from that meeting. And then coming before you all will be um, a petition for Mountain Falls Park to become a sanitary district. So I'm told that it will come to you all and then it'll come back to us. But we approved, a, we approved for it to go forward to public hearing. And I believe that is all I have. All right. Thank you, ma'am. We're at the portion of our meeting that this is open for citizen comments for any items that's not on our agenda that anyone would like to come forward to speak to us of any matter they would choose. Seeing none, I'll close the citizen comment portion of it. Then next is our public hearing portion. Our first uh, public hearing item we have tonight is a conditional use permit number 04-18 for West Oak Farm Market, LLC, submitted for establishment of a special event facility and restaurant in the RA Rural Area Zoning District the property is located on Middle Road, Winchester, Virginia, and is identified with property identification number 74-A-3 in the Back Creek Magistral District. Mr. Klein. Yes, uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. Uh, this is a application for conditional use permit for a special event facility and restaurant. Uh, the property is located on Middle Road in the Back Creek District. It's presently zoned RA, rural areas, and the current land use is agricultural, to working orchard and farm. Uh, the proposed use is a special event facility for weddings and other similar type events. 
that may be private or associated with the farmer's market and a restaurant use. For your reference, here is a vicinity map. Again, for orientation, middle road, works the property's frontage. The property subject to this application is highlighted in outlined in black and highlighted in yellow. And it's adjacent <coughs> to Orchard View Elementary School. Uh, it's surrounded by other like RA uses, uh, primarily agricultural, and across Middle Road are single family residences. Again, uh, West Oaks Farm is a uh, working farm with orchards, and presently under construction is a 10,500 square foot farmer's market building. The, this conditional use permit application proposes approximately 3,400 square feet uh, dedicated to a special event center in the form of a banquet room, an outdoor picnic shelter for special events that can be used by uh, the guests, um, a restaurant, which will include a deli, service, a deli style counter service type use with a commercial kitchen, permanent restroom facilities, a designated parking area for the special events, and that the special events may accommodate up to 275 people. And again, they may be affiliated with an event at the farmer's market or they may be a private separate event. Here's an overview of the uh, property. Uh, in the bottom right hand corner is a view from above Middle Road in the orchards uh, looking towards the, the front facade of the property. And in the top left corner is the side and rear view of the property. Uh, which includes the special event and banquet home, banquet room. Here is the illustrative sketch plan as provided by the applicant. Again, for orientation, you have Middle Road here, an Orchard View Elementary School. Presently, there is a entrance. The applicant intends to continue to use special events uh, that is between their property line and Orchard View Elementary School. The applicant is also uh, exploring the opportunity for a second commercial entrance. Again, the farm market is set kind of in the middle of the property behind the existing orchards. Outside you have, again, the, the picnic shelter and the designated gravel parking area. This proposed uh, conditional use is consistent with the 2035 Comprehensive Plan, which supports opportunities for agritourism and agribusiness in the county's rural areas. The applicant, Mr. Joe Snap, has addressed all review agency comments, including site access, compliance with building and fire safety code, and the proposed use is generally consistent with the county's policies and regulations. Should the Planning Commission find this use to be appropriate, staff would recommend the following conditions. That all review agency comments be complied with at all times. That an illustrative sketch plan be submitted to and approved by Frederick County prior to the establishment of the use. The building permits shall be acquired prior to the establishment of the deli style counter service restaurant use. That all events shall start no earlier than 8 a.m. and all events and related activities shall conclude by midnight. That events may accommodate up to and not to exceed 275 persons. That one monument style sign with a maximum sign area of 50 square feet not to exceed 10 feet in height is permitted and that any expansion or modification of these uses will require the approval of a new conditional use permit. This evening, staff is seeking a recommendation from the Planning Commission to the Board of Supervisors on this conditional use permit regarding the proposed special event facility and restaurant located on the property identified with property identification number 74-A-3. Happy to answer any questions you may have, and the applicant, Mr. Joe Snap, is here this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Klein. Mr. Unger? Just one, Tyler. I didn't realize. Are we putting two entrances in, or maybe we are? Um, I'll, as I understand it, uh, they presently have one existing entrance, and they're exploring the possibility of a second entrance. The applicant has submitted uh, his site plan for a commercial entrance to VDOT, and I'll let Mr. Snap touch on his plans for the entrances. Anyone else? I have just one question. Um, when we're talking about the special events may accommodate to 275 persons, but the farm market will be open at the same time that that concurrent so is there any restrictions on that is there we're combining those two or there is not that could be going on um, the farm market is a buy right use so there are no restrictions okay. um, and it's also an agriculturally that part of the building is agriculturally exempt okay thank you would the applicant like to come forward and speak You could, sir, just come state your name and your 
Address, please, or Mass Jail District. My name is Joe Snap, Back Creek District. Um, I'd say to address the, the entrance, the second entrance, <coughs> actually it's only basically primary use is just for the farm. Uh, maybe a uh, service entrance occasionally, but mostly for our farm, you know, for the agricultural use. Just to comment about your building, you do have a beautiful place there. Uh, the only thing that I can think of, and it's nothing that can be controlled, is I don't think, I know how well Johnny Marker does with his, and it's a very nice facility too, and sometimes they actually have to direct traffic in now there. Middle roads, you know, 55 miles, 50 mile an hour through there. I just wonder, hopefully there's not a problem, but you got great sight distance, I can see that, so mm -hmm. it shouldn't be. If he's generating what he does, I can't imagine what you're going to be generating there. I mean, there's going to be, a, it should be great. Well, thank you. <laughs> Anyone else have a question from the applicant? Thank you, sir. Well, thank you, and just like to ask for your all's approval. Thanks, sir. This time I'll open the public hearing. To anyone who would like to speak to this matter, this is the time to come forward, come to the microphone. <clears throat> Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing. Um, Any other comments? I'd just like to say that um, I had the pleasure of touring uh, Joe's facility yesterday, and um, uh, you can call it state of the art. You can also call it, uh, it's gonna be a big, big plus for agritourism business uh, uh, for sure. and. Uh, he has a great facility there. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? No other questions for applicant or staff? I'll if there is nothing else, motion. Kevin, I would uh, like to recommend approval of conditional use permit uh, number 0818 for West Oaks Farm Market, LLC. Second. Do I have a second? Time to vote. Mr. Unger? Unger, yes. Marston, yes. Ambrogi, yes. Klein, yes. <coughs> yes. Thomas, yes. Bolden, yes. Lamont, yes. Trumpet, yes. Dawson, yes. Moon, yes. And a chair votes, yes. This motion is passed. It'll go to the Board of Supervisors for their May 9, 2018 meeting. Good luck, sir. Mr. Chairman, I'll have to excuse myself for the next item. Thank you, sir. The next public hearing item is also a conditional use permit for number 05-18 for Waveland Farms, LLC, submitted for establishment of a special event facility in the RA Zoning District. This property is located at 1211 Marlboro Road, Stephen City, Virginia, and are identified with property identification numbers 73-1-14-1-6, 73-A-103, and 73-A-103. Dash 103A in the Back Creek Mass Jail District. Again, Mr. Klein. Yes, uh, good evening again. Um, this is again another uh, conditional use application for a special event facility uh, at 1211 Marlboro Road. The property again is zoned RA Rural Areas. Its current land use is agricultural and residential, and the proposed use is a special event facility for weddings and other similar type events. Again, if I can direct your attention to the screen. For orientation, you have Marlboro Road here. You have an existing private uh, subdivision street in the form of Nittany South Way and Abigail Way. And the subject properties are outlined in black, highlighted in yellow. Properties surrounded by other agricultural uses and uh, single family residences. Uh, this is a 24, working, a 24 acre working farm. Uh, they raise livestock. And uh, there's also a single family detached residence on the property that consists of the special event center. This conditional use permit application proposes use of an existing historic barn for to host special events for up to 100 people and a designated outdoor area for temporary tents that can accommodate larger gatherings up to 180 persons. The applicant proposes to use portable restroom facilities, which will be screened from view by the topography of the site and existing farm outbuildings. They are providing a designated uh, gravel parking area for guests, and they'll provide valet service uh, to and from the parking area for guests that need special accommodations. And they're proposing to include a new commercial entrance from Abigail Way and Nittany South Way. 
their special event uh, request may accommodate up to 180 persons. Here's an illustrative sketch plan provided by the applicant. Again, for your orientation, Marlboro Road is along the property's frontage. Their existing private driveway is here. The applicant proposes that they will gate off their existing private driveway to special events to make sure that special event traffic accesses the site along Nittany South Way to Abigail Way in the new uh, commercial entrance that they, they've constructed, which includes a 50-foot uh, private ingress, egress easement with the adjacent property owner. Again, on the, on the property, you have the existing single-family residence, the event center in the historic barn with outdoor space and the designated gravel parking area. This proposed conditional use is consistent with the 2035 comprehensive plan, which supports opportunities for agritourism and agribusiness in the county's rural areas. The applicant has addressed all review agency comments, including site access, compliance with building and fire safety code, and the proposed use is generally consistent with the county's policies and regulations. Should the Planning Commission find this use to be appropriate, staff would recommend the following conditions. All review agency comments shall be complied with at all times. An illustrative sketch plan shall be submitted to and approved by Frederick County prior to the establishment of the use. That the existing private driveway shall be gated off, not open to special event traffic, and may not be used for temporary or overflow parking. All special event related traffic shall access the site via the private ingress egress easement from Nittany South Way and Abigail Way. That events shall start no earlier than 10 a.m. and all events shall conclude by midnight. Events may accommodate up to and not to exceed 180 persons. They would be allowed one monument style sign with a sign area of 50 square feet not to exceed 10 feet in height and that any expansion or modification of this use would require the approval of a new conditional use permit. Following a public hearing this evening, staff is seeking a recommendation from the Planning Commission to forward to the Board of Supervisors on this conditional use regarding a proposed special event center at a property identified with parcel identification numbers 73-A-103, 103A, and 73-14-1-6. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. And Tim Stowe, who is representing the applicant, is here this evening as well. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions for Mr. Klein? Mr. Thomas. I don't see anything where they're, they're planning to serve anything. Food or water or uh, drinks at this special events? This application does not include a commercial kitchen or catering kitchen. Um, all food and drinks will be brought from off site by a catering company. So that doesn't have to be included in this at all. It's not, it's not uh, you're not approving like a restaurant or anything like you did with the previous application. They, they, all their food and drink will be brought off, from off site. And disposed of off site? I believe so, yes. Remnants, okay. Questions? Thank you, Mr. Klein. Uh, the applicant would like to come forward. Mr. Stowe. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have, but I don't want to. We know. Just go. Away. If you could, just state your name. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> we know you. Something Stowe with Stowe Engineering. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks, sir. <laughs> Here's my question, Mr. Stowe. Mr. Unger. Tim, where are they planning on putting the sign at? They have a, uh, they own Fee Simple right away out to uh, Marlboro Road along their existing entrance. We looked at that area, but we've got to make sure we place it so that it doesn't block sight distance when you're using their entrance. Uh, so that's the area we've been looking at out that way. Where the old right away went? Where the that's correct, yes. Old driveway. Yep. I'm just wondering if that would be kind of deceiving if we're going to use the other road down there. And that's one of the things we're wrestling with. That's why we haven't come up with a sign yet or pulled a sign permit to, to do that. Thank you. Mr. Thomas? Yeah, Nittany Southway is a private road, right? That's a subdivision road uh, that has been dedicated to the county for ultimate dedication to VDOT is my understanding of where that is. So um, once three homes are connected to it, and my understanding is VDOT will take that road over. Okay. 
Any other questions? Other questions? Okay. There, there are uh, no other houses on that uh, Natty South Way right now. Is that correct? No. That is correct. Yes, sir. No houses constructed now. So when when those three houses are, are constructed, it will become a B dot roadway at that point. Yes, sir. That is my understanding. I would add, we ask, um, we have gone to VDOT because this private easement actually connects three houses to that system, and we've asked them to consider going ahead and bringing that into the system uh, so that the county doesn't have to continue uh, being the owner of that. We have not gotten a response back from VDOT yet. Is there a reason they're not using their, their private entranceway for this event center? There is, Mr. Molden. It's a sight distance problem. There's a real safety problem there. So um, they're they're on the on the back side of a hill. If you're heading west, they're on the back side of a hill. So there's a real sight distance problem there. Uh, if you're westbound going in, or if you're trying to get out and, and proceed west. I didn't actually ride out and see the site. Um, I'm concerned that um, that the lots that that will be built on um, are subject to. Um, some traffic, uh, and, and I think that that really hurts the value of those properties when you think about that event center coming in on on that on that roadway past those lots. That's my concern. Thank you. Uh, let me go to Mr. Unger down here. I believe he was next. Clarify, tell me if you will, who is the owner of the road that we're going going back to the event center? Mr. Is it the county or is it the land? Who is it? County doesn't own any roads. The, the private entrance is owned by the property owner, by the landowner. No, I don't mean that one. I'm not going to use that one. I'm talking about the one that we're going to use. To get back there, we're going through a subdivision. Who owns that road? The county is the current owner of that. Uh, uh, Mr. Ruddick, I could get some clarification. I didn't think we owned roads, but uh, the county owned roads, but. Either. Part of the subdivision process, when the lots are created, the right of way for the road is also created. Um, that is dedicated to Frederick County for ultimate acceptance into the state system of highways. Um, until it has been accepted by the state, then we carry a significant bond to guarantee that the improvements will be made pursuant to the subdivision of the, the lots. So while it has been dedicated to the county, at such time, the state deems it's acceptable to them to be turned into the system. You know, uh, the the county does it is indeed ultimately responsible for that road. So the county's paying the bond and not the guy that owns the no. land. The subdivider of that high bank subdivision has provided a bond to the county, which guarantees the completion of that road. Well, in my eyes, then he still owns it. That is a, a legal distinction as part of the subdivision and planning process that I'm sure Rob will be able to help me with if needed. Um, but the applicant is still responsible for the improvements within the right of way that's been dedicated to the county until such time the state has accepted it. And they accept it, again, after there are at least three users on there, and uh, by resolution of the Board of Supervisors, who then send that down to the Commonwealth Transportation Board, who then take it into the system. So there's a process to go through. Obviously, as the road, as the lots have not been developed residentially at this time, they're right at the infancy of the development of that project. Well, if there's damage done to this road, if this event center's back there, then who's responsible to take care of the damage? Uh, the uh, developer will be. Pardon? The developer of the subdivision will be. Okay. Well, uh, he's still the owner. Let me come back to Mr. Thomas. Yeah, just, just to make sure we're, we're on the same spot with this. Uh, Mr. Rinker is 100% responsible for all maintenance on that road until it's dedicated to the state, and he's responsible for controlling that road. There are county police don't go out there and control the road because it's a private road, essentially, even though it's been dedicated as a right-of-way to the county. And the county has no, has zero responsibility, both for maintenance and financially for any maintenance on that road. That's correct. The developer is still responsible for those <laughs> items. So when it is to be dedicated to the state, if the state turns around and says, uh, that's nice, but 
gee, we've changed the criteria between when you started this and where we are now. It's the developer is 100% financially responsible to bring it up to state standards to dedicate it to the state. Right. Yeah, there are complications to that, but um, the, the development developer is the responsible person. Okay. And that complication, if you will, is always uh, how much damage may have been done to the road, uh, how much of the standards changed, is there sufficient funding in the guarantee today um, compared to what it was in 2007 to enable that to come into the system. So there's a lot of negotiations and work that has to be done to get it turned on over. Uh, there's a risk there for, for certain, but it's the developer's responsibility. Well, I, I, you know, I think this is a, a good thing, the event center, but I don't want the county on the hook for any cost because of the event center. Now, usually when we accept these roads into the system and say after three uh, houses are built, the, st the state will accept them into the state system, we don't anticipate having an event center that could have 180 people driving back and forth to events, plus commercial trucks driving back and forth. So this is a little bit different than what we normally run into with a subdivision road. Do we need to put a criteria or just put a statement in here to clarify that the conditional use permit holder is 100% responsible for any damage to this road when it has to be brought up to state standards due to the special event center being placed back here? so that there's no confusion. Uh, you say there might be confusion in here. I, I don't think we should have any confusion. <coughs> so if we added a statement, maybe that would clarify it. <clears throat> Thanks, sir. The, Mr. Brady? The, the Planning Commission has the ability to put any conditions they see fit onto the conditional use permit as long as it's related to the proposed use. As you've just described, that would be uh, a relevant consideration in this case. I think the only way to do that there, that person would have to carry the bond instead of the guy that actually got it. That's well, that person has the bond. <clears throat> the guy that owns a lot has the bonds. I, I think carry the bond. I think Mr. Rinker is the person that owns the lots and the special events center. Could I, could I go back over to Mr. Ruddy or Mr. Williams to clarify who's carrying the bonds? The way the, pro the way the process works is that when a subdivision is filed, in order for the county to approve, for the subdivision administrator to approve it, the county requires that the, the subdivider, the owner of that land, post a bond with the county for the cost, the estimated cost of getting the road into the system. Once the deed is recorded, the plat is recorded, the road becomes county property. Many times, or I should say the right of way becomes county property. Many times, of course, it's a subdivision in paper form only. Nothing, none, the improvement hasn't been put in. In this particular instance, the improvement has been installed, but there, the bond is still required to be posted. What happens is if there is some default by the developer in not getting that road into the system, and if the developer isn't there to pay to get the road into the system, then the county can call the bond to get the road in the system. The risk for the county is, is that in that situation of a default where the developer doesn't put up to get the road into the system, is that potentially the money that's posted as the bond isn't enough. And we've had that happen a couple of times. Um, the county could, the Planning Commission could recommend in this instance, it, we haven't typically had it happen in the past, um, an additional bond be posted in, conduct, in conjunction with the CUP because of the additional risk that the additional traffic poses as far as damage to the road um, that could potentially go is, is an obligation to be unsecured um, beyond the current bond. That's going to be a judgment call for the commission to make. Thanks, sir. Any other questions? I've still got a question. Uh, are the lots owned by the same people that, that are applying for the, uh, for the conditional use permit? Uh, they have purchased one of the lots. 
uh, from the developer. Uh, as I understand it, perhaps one additional lot is owned by a private person and the balance remained with the original developer. With that being said, I, I think that that event center and the traffic coming by those individual lots or that person that owns that lot, you are affecting the value of that lot by, by putting that traffic by there. That's why I asked about the, um, the private driveway. Um, why wasn't that being used? But if there's a sight distance, I understand that. But when you're, when you're bringing 180 cars by um, my undeveloped lot, you have, you have a, definitely affected the value of it. Thank you. Any other commissioners? Any other questions? Chair, I got one question to Mr. Williams. How would we establish or who would establish the value of a bond that would go on there as a backup bond? How would that happen? Ordinarily, when we have a subdivision, the subdivision administrator, in conjunction with the Public Works Department, does an estimate. Mm -hmm. uh, I suppose what could happen here is certainly if the commission was so disposed to go in that direction, the commission could refer the matter to staff for a determination like that. Because uh, presumably sitting here tonight, no one knows what that number would be. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, there's no other questions of the applicant. Thank you, sir. Um, I'll open the public hearing at this time. If there is anyone that wants to come forward to speak on this matter, uh, now is your chance. Come forward to the microphone. State your name and your magisterial district. <clears throat> okay, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. Uh, I'm Dudley Rinker, manager of Rinker Properties. Uh, at 1156 Marlboro Road, Stephen City, Virginia, in the Back Creek District. Rinker Property still owns nine of the 11 lots in Apple Bank South, and three of them connect to Waverly or Waveland Farm. We are opposed to this CUP for an event center. Last October, I granted access to the, the residents living on Waveland Farm driveway uh, on the Abigail Way for the family's safety. Mr. Huey, uh, the father, passed away shortly before and they related stories to me about how dangerous uh, the entrance was, uh, how dangerous it was for the hospice people, nurses, caregivers, family uh, coming in and out of the driveway off Marlboro Road. Trying to be a good neighbor, we granted the easement for the safety of their families. There were two conditions. First, the entrance on the Abigail Way had to be built to VDOT specifications. It's hard uh, to believe the entrance that they put in will meet VDOT specs uh, for, as a residential driveway, uh, much less as a commercial entrance. Yes, VDOT has signed off on the CUP, but they don't own Nittany Way or Abigail Way. We do, or at least in this discussion, I assume we still do. Uh, but we're responsible for it. Uh, their interest would have only been the entrance on the Nittany Way up on Marlboro Road. The second requirement was that uh, was to physically remove the Waveland Farm entrance on the Marlboro Road, not uh, not to block it off with hay rolls on a Saturday night, but to take it out so it cannot be used. Uh, that has not been done. I have, a, I have a letter from the designer of Nittany Way and Abigail Way. He knows more about the road than anyone else. And uh, I think that letter was passed out to the members before the meeting. The first three paragraphs are basically background, but I call your attention to the last paragraph. <clears throat> After review, reviewing the proposed event center application, I cannot endorse adding the commercial property generated by events that in, include up to 160 cars, catering trucks, and other associated traffic. I have safety concerns for fire and rescue with that much traffic. I also have concerns the road will become heavily damaged. You, are, you meaning me, are still carrying the road bond until three houses are constructed on, in your subdivision. The potential damage to the road can result in tens of thousands of dollars, perhaps more. Uh, 
cost to me. Uh, the road was not designed or intended, intended for this quantity and type of traffic. And that was done by Gary Oates, the designer of the, of the subdivision and the road. Um, please note the last two sentences. The road was not designed for that much, that much or type of traffic and the cost of the potential repairs to fix those damages. I am responsible for that road and the road bond, not a Waveland Farm, not the county, not BDOT, and not a bride who's getting married at a barn. In the end, the responsibility of the road and the road bond rests solely on me and nobody else. I have many other concerns, but too many to address tonight. Again, I ask you to turn the CUP down, and we thank you for your consideration. And if you have any questions, I'll try to answer. Thank you, sir. Any questions for Mr. Ranker? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Would anyone else like to come forward to speak to this public hearing tonight? This... Good evening. Could you state your name? And... My name is Cindy Lehman. I'm in the Back Creek District, and I'm the owner, one of the owners of Waveland Farm. Um, I grew up on that farm. Uh, we moved there when I was four years old. Dudley's been a great neighbor and family friend and a, a close friend to my father who did pass away in August. Um, we had a celebration of life for my dad because we knew he was terminal. We invited all of our neighbors there and we had a great gathering in our barn. Um, I shared with many folks there, including Mr. Ranker, that our goal would be to one day, we didn't have a set agenda, to hopefully be able to have a few events there to help us keep the farm, preserve the home and the barn, and just keep what we have as a legacy for our, our children, and also maintain the property. Um, Mr. Rinker is correct that I did approach him about being able to have an access onto his cul-de-sac because our driveway entrance currently is very dangerous. When we moved there 50 years ago, Marble Road was not traveled as it is now. Um, and it just, you know, we needed to make a change. Um, in that thought process, we actually had asked VDOT and a board of supervisor to come out and, and address what we should and shouldn't do. And in the event that we did want to pursue having some events at the barn, what was their recommendation? Everyone came back saying, connect here. This is the perfect way to resolve this issue. It gives you a safer entrance and it just makes it a more um, manageable process. Um, so in our contract, uh, I did approach Mr. Rinker. I felt that it was only the right thing to do was to buy a lot after over 10 years of no one buying lots there um, in consideration to get this easement. Um, I feel he probably would have given it to me anyway, but I wanted to go ahead and, and buy a lot. We established a, a purchase price for the, the lots um, and it does buffer in front of our barn. So there's a, a four and a half acre buffer in front of the barn that we will ensure no one builds there. So it does give a, a nice privacy from the house all the way to the barn. The adjoining lots that he's referencing actually connect to our farm. Um, it has a um, pine road barrier buffer. So there is no visibility. I can't say they wouldn't see perhaps some lights, but um, it's not right butting up against a proposed uh, construction. Um, there is a 200 foot setback for those lots anyway by uh, a resident a rural track so we're not going to be up above or butting up to anyone's home um, as far as the permanent removal of the entrance as part of our contract it was stipulated in the purchase contract and the easement that we would adhere to VDOT requirements for the closure of our existing driveway VDOT's written requirement back to us indicated that a locked gate or a secured gate to block anyone from being able to come in or out of that entrance was acceptable. We did a drawing, we sent it to them. Um, we've put, we will have a gate there that is locked and, and permanently established 
in the event that we're successful in this permit. So I just wanted to give you our position. Um, you know, we're not, we both have full-time jobs. We're not looking to have mega events. We're looking to have a few weddings on the weekends, one wedding per weekend. It's not multiple events. Um, and just try to preserve and support agro business and tourism. So that's why we're requesting this. So thank, thank you for your consideration. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing. Commissioners, questions, discussion, thoughts? Just go ahead, Roger. I mean, I don't have any problem with the conditional use permit. My problem is who is responsible to maintain Nittany Southway the road? If the applicant owned the road, I'd have absolutely, or was responsible for the maintenance of the road, I'd have absolutely no qualms about approving this. But with the applicant not being responsible for the maintenance of the road and someone else being responsible for the maintenance of the road, that bothers me because until it becomes a state road, I mean, if it was a state road, it would be fine. But since it is essentially a private road with a private individual responsible for the maintenance, that individual has no ability to control the traffic now that's going to be on that road because it's going to be going back to the special events center, whether it's commercial vehicles going back or private vehicles going back. Uh, he, has, he has no uh, game in that, that whole plan. So, again, my concern is if the applicant of the conditional use permit stepped up and said, hey, uh, I will uh, put in a, an additional bond over and above what the applicant or the previous applicant for the uh, road has put in to guarantee any damage to the road was repaired before it goes into the state system, I wouldn't have a problem. Uh, but that, that's my concern right now. Well, let's look down the road a little bit here, too. Uh, my, my concern is uh, kind of agreeing with uh, Mr. Molden. First of all, you're going to hurt the value of those lots. If somebody looks at those lots in there tomorrow and they say, well, we're going to have a vent center in the back and there's going to be 160 cars going in here every two weekends a month, nah. The other thing is, is five, six, eight, ten years down the road, we get five or six houses in there. Now, what's going to happen with people wanting 160 I mean, would I buy a lot in there and build a house and 160 cars going in on the weekends and in and out of my subdivision? Not. That concerns me, along with what you're saying, Roger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, if it's an event center, if it's 100, limited to, what, 160 or 180 people, uh, it probably would be in a range of 100, but it's yeah. 100 vehicles in, 100 vehicles out. 90 to 100. Yes. So, but it is around 200, really, total <clears throat> trips in and out. Uh, so, I understand that concern, too. Anyone else? Uh, just a comment. I think we've got two good neighbors. It sounds yeah. like they do get along well. Uh, there's a communication problem. I don't think they're talking before they come here. Uh, my biggest problem is construction starts in there. I know what happens when they get in there with big trucks, shingle trucks, concrete trucks and everything else to tear the road up. You're going to dispute on who's got to fix that road. I know that's going to be a problem. Uh, I love the event center. I wish it could happen. But with the circumstances we're dealing with, I can't be in favor of it. Thanks, sir. Any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion. This is Back Creek. Well, if there is nothing else, and as much as I hate to say it, I have to recommend a now of a conditional use permit 05-18, uh, just because of the reasons we talked about. Second. I was, and again, when we're voting yes, we're voting for a denial, so make sure we understand that a yes means denial, no means you don't. So I will start with Mr. Moan. Moan, yes. Dawson, yes. Turpinet, yes. Lamont, yes. Molden, yes. Thomas, yes. Pine, yes. 
Ambrogi, yes. Marston, yes. Hunger, yes. <clears throat> the chair votes yes. This motion is denied. It will go to the board, though, on May 23rd, 2018 meeting. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a request that the staff make sure they express to the board our concern on why, why we turned it down, uh, traffic and who was responsible for the road and property value, so that they understand our logic on why we voted recommending denial. I know you always do that, but just emphasize those those were really our only concerns. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Thank you. Our next item on the agenda, <coughs> CPPA number 01-18 for St. Paul on the Hill, that land use designation amendment request. This is a request to change the land use designation for one parcel of land that totals 4.971 acres. The property is identified with property identification number 54-A-128 and is located at 1527 Cincinnati Road in the Red Bud Matt Sterrell District. The property is located within the Sewer and Water Swaza District in the Urban Development Area, the UDA. The property is currently designated in the Cincinnati Eastern Frederick Urban Area Plan for the 2035 comprehensive plan for institutional land use with environmental resources. The applicant is requesting to change the current institutional designation to Urban Center. Ms. Perkins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. As you stated, this is a request for a comprehensive plan amendment from institutional to urban center. Now for this property, as you stated, it's currently zoned RP residential performance with an institutional land use. Now that land use is reflective of the current church on the property, as well as the adjacent school, which is also uh, planned industrial. The site is surrounded, by, as I stated, by institutional, residential, and the Greenwood Urban Center, and they are seeking to amend from institutional to urban center. On the screen to your left is the zoning map for the property. As you can see, the property is outlined in black. The yellow is the current RP residential performance zoning, and then that pink along Sensony is a B1 uh, commercial district. And this is a blow up of the current comprehensive plan designation as you can see, there's that um, pink and green hatching for institutional across Sensony um, and along uh, the strip to the east. You see that um, little red circles. That's the urban center designation, and the yellow hatching is reflective of the existing residential. This is the proposed um, request. As you can see, it will take that urban center, um, the circle designation, and extend it to this property. And just for reference, this is a blow up of the current land use plan. You can see the larger hatched area is the limits of the Greenwood Urban Center, um, kind of that central uh, proposed commercial uh, mixed use area. And it does extend a little bit out since me, um, which is reflective of some of the current commercial uses. Now, again, the property is zoned RP. It's a residential zoning district. The current buy right density of the property, if, de if developed with a townhouse or garden apartment uh, use, would be a 10 unit per acre density. Now, expanding the urban center designation on the property would increase that buy right density from 10 units an acre up to 20 units an acre if they developed with a multifamily use. So, that density increase, as I stated, would be a buy right density increase. It would not require a rezoning, which would then address any impacts. The Conference of Plans and Programs Committee did discuss this at their April meeting. They recommended approval and sent it forward to the Planning Commission for discussion. So tonight we are seeking a recommendation from the Planning Commission to forward to the Board of Supervisors on this request. I would be glad to answer any questions. And Mr. Evan Wyatt is here on behalf of the application. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Perkins. Any questions for Ms. Perkins? This is an information discussion item. Thank you. Is there any questions for Mr. Wyatt? This is a discussion item. I believe Mr. Wyatt has a, wants to give a brief oh, oh. presentation. Mr. Wyatt, come forward, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. I'm Evan Wyatt with Greenway Engineering. We're representing St. Paul's in this uh, comprehensive plan amendment application. Um, Candace did a good job of covering uh, the application, uh, the specifics of it, and Chris, of course, talked about what we discussed at the CPPA. Um, the uh, 
couple things I just wanted to do tonight uh, is introduce uh, the group that's with me uh, primarily over here on my right. Uh, we have representatives from St. Paul's and Virginia Diocese Housing who have been working with this vision uh, for quite a while. And then their development partner, Representative Paul Brown with Wesley Development Housing Corporation. Um, St. Paul's is a mission church and they desire to advocate uh, housing for elderly, lower income residents of the community. And in order to do the facility that has been envisioned and desired, that's the basis for the comp plan amendment. Uh, as Candace said, the property is currently zoned RP, which would allow for residential development. However, to be able to do a singular multifamily building, uh, the comprehensive plan, actually, the zoning ordinance points back to the comprehensive plan and says, even though it's zoned RP, the comp plan still has to show it as an urban center. Uh, so that's the basis of the request. Um, as you saw on the maps, uh, the properties adjacent to us, as well as directly across the road, are currently in the urban center designation. Um, so this would uh, change, would allow St. Paul's to move forward with the project. Uh, what's envisioned is a 70 unit facility, 59 uh, units would be one bedroom, 11 would be two bedrooms. Uh, once again, it would be utterly income qualified housing and the facility itself would have community rooms uh, with various opportunities uh, for internal uh, activities such as fitness center, wellness room, uh, residential services meeting room, game room, lobby room, and a library and computer room. Uh, so it's intended and designed to keep the, the residential folks uh, active on the property. And the way that the concept plan is, I'm sure you saw the elevations that were provided in the application. Uh, what it would do would be create a new uh, St. Paul's church that would be then connected to the facility that would situate behind it and angle towards uh, the NREF facility. Um, so I just wanted to give kind of an overview of what the, uh, the program is. I know this is just discussion tonight. Um, I would also mention that uh, this, this particular project, uh, Supervisor Dunn did have this uh, hosted at his February town hall meeting. Uh, St. Paul's also has had community meetings and done individual outreach to the adjoining properties. And so far, uh, everything that we've heard today has been positive. Um, but I'll certainly answer any questions you might have. And once again, uh, the development partner, Mr. Brown with Wesley Housing, is here as well. Thank you, Mr. Watt. Any questions? Thanks, sir. Thank you. Any discussion? Amongst ourselves? You're just, none? Oh. I just wanted to throw one last thing in from the Comp Plan Committee perspective, just to point out that what Evans kind of touched on is kind of an innovative approach, you know, to, you know, both addressing, I think, what an existing, you know, church is looking for, but also uh, an important community need. So I think from a comp plan committee perspective, that was something that was certainly recognized as a good first step toward the whole urban center concept. Thank you, Mr. Moon. Do I have a recommendation or do you want to move this forward? Is that what I'm hearing? Sounds good. We'll set it on. I guess it'll go to do I get a majority vote. Do I need to vote on this? Yeah. Just information. Then it goes to the board of supervisors for the May 23rd, 2018 meeting. We're down to the end of our agenda for tonight. Uh, Mr. Ruddy, do we have a meeting for the 16th? We will have no meeting on May 16th, uh, but we will have one in the beginning of June. Thanks, sir. And I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourn. Thank you.